everything I'm about to say, you already know it to be true. You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Okay, my brothers and okay, my brothers and sisters. We're going to talk Negronomics today on this Man Talk Monday. But before I get into that, let, look, let me say some things about the people that have been trying to come to my comment section and to attack me. <clears throat> Including Brother Taz, who came through my comment section. Y'all are not my equals. You know, I worked real hard as an older dude to try to be humble in my understanding of the differences in the intellectual gap between most people and myself. But the truth of the matter is, bro, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm way smarter than you want me to be. And unfortunately for you, your perceptions of me do not make me whatever you want me to be. You could look at this monitor and tell yourself, well, he's just a pookie. Like one dude came through and said, he's a pookie talking ish. You could say that all you want, bro, but it still don't change the fact that I was in a naval engineering school. It don't change the fact that out of 97 people, almost all of them white, except for me and another brother, I graduated number four. It don't change the fact that the top five of us were separated by less than two whole points. So nothing you say will change that. It don't change the fact that I had, I was a straight A student in high school. See, I was a bad boy, but I'm not your typical bad boy. I wasn't bad because I was dumb. I was bad because I was bored. I was bad because the, the schoolwork was just too easy for me. I would have been skipped if I wasn't fighting so much. I was just always in fighting, fights and stuff, always getting suspended and stuff. I even got kicked out of school, one school. You know what I'm saying? So truthfully, had I been just a, 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 a better behaved boy, my life trajectory probably went to, probably would have went to a different direction, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, I just wasn't cut like that. And the part of what makes me a rebel, part of the reason why I'm the kind of dude that I am, is because I've always been smart enough to see when I was being played. I was always smart enough to tell when somebody was selling me a, 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 a wet food stamp. Most of y'all don't get that reference. You know, at one time, food stamps was actually paper. But, you know, I'm, I'm a little older. But, you know, I was always, I, I can always see through the bull. And that's what makes me the kind of man I am because I would speak on it. I would peep out what people are doing and I would check them. Even as a young dude, this is how I was. So, <clears throat> to the dude that came through talking about Taz best of me. Excuse me. But to the dude that came through my um, section, right? talking about Taz besting me with this whole thing about the Me Too movement. First of all, me and Taz didn't even debate, so how can he best me? Talking about, and the dude said that I couldn't explain myself, I couldn't articulate my position, so that means Taz besting me intellectually. Taz is not my intellectual equal, bro. There, 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 there is no barren moon in, in, in all the universes where Taz could best me intellectually. And I ain't, and I, I'm not trying to say nothing bad about the brother. You know what I'm saying? See, this is why I hate talking like this because it comes off as though I'm either being arrogant and snooty or something like that, or I'm trying to belittle somebody else. But I'm not, bro. I'm just not going to let y'all put these little people on my level because they're not on my level. A few of my subscribers are up there. Brother Brian, man, I think I think he's a psychologist or something, the way he be talking. Because, I mean, when it comes to things of the mind, Brother Brian be up on it, bro. He he peeps it out. But Brother Brian is like a psychologist or something. I don't know if he's a psychologist or, or what, man, but the dude know his stuff. But, you know, I'm not going to let y'all put these people on my level. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and to the feminists, the, 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 the lesbo feminists that came into my, to my comment section, did all this back and forth with me, never answered any of my questions, but think she won the argument. You didn't win the argument, bro. You, you're not winning the argument because, first of all, you know you're wrong because if you thought you was right, you would answer the questions that I put out for you. But by you recognizing that the questions are traps, it tells me that you know that you are wrong. So, I mean... 
y'all could think y'all winning y'all mind, but you're not winning. And most importantly, you're not winning in life. And that's why I want to talk about Negro Nomics. Because Negro Nomics is one of these things that, that, that black people fall victim to all the time. Anybody that come talk to us about money, come talk to us about power, we gravitate to these things because this is what we want. You know, there's an old saying in, 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 the, in the instructions of a con man, right? When a con man is going through his little learning process, he is taught, he is taught that you can't con an honest man. You see, a man that don't seek power can't be sold on how to get power. A man that don't seek to use money as control over people can't be sold on how to get money. Because I don't need money for me to be cush. Cush gonna be cush when I'm broke or rich. I'm still cush. You know what I'm saying? I don't want power. I don't want nobody to give me power and, and dominion and authority over nothing and nobody because my, my things are my things. My area is my area. And I'm content with whatever power and control that I have in my area, I'm content with it. So offer me power over other people does not appeal to me. You know what I'm saying? But this is the thing. These are the kinds of things that we gravitate towards. Every time, that's why every pro-black Negro you got out there, they always talking money. Think about it. It's always about economics. It's always about education. It's always about money. It's always about the politics of race. It's always about, about, about the politics of politics. Man, y'all can't never tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. After I done this video, I mean, filmed the whole thing, started editing it, you know what I'm saying? Because I said I was going to cut it a little bit. I get this video sent to me in my recommendations of Boyce Watkins talking about Jonathan Majors. And lo and behold, we're talking about Negronomics right now, right? I, I, by now, you heard the introduction. Lo and behold, guess what the excuse slash justification for Jonathan Majors' actions Boyce Watkins gave? Money. That is Negronomics, my brothers. That is Negronomics. Listen to this shit. Well, what do you what's your thoughts on on the the conversation in our community currently going on with jonathan major um what i think you have to understand too is that when you're black the agenda becomes especially harsh for two reasons number one mm -hmm. black people we because we have not uh really had the movement in terms of focusing on wealth <gasps> the way that we should we don't own anything so when Negro we go knowledge. to hollywood you you don't really have a lot of stake or equity in hollywood they own you you know you you it's like either do it or you out, you know, their way or the highway. So a lot of these actors that you look up to and admire, they're just slaves. They're just high paid slaves. They have to do what they're told or they're in trouble. Whoa! Now, now, now see the problem with that is, see this is what I'm talking about Negronomics, right? Targeting you by way of making you believe that there's some type of power in money. First of all, white folks that go to Hollywood are broke. Do you know how many of the white people that, that are big stars right now were once homeless? They were sleeping outside, sleeping in cars, all kinds of stuff. He makes it sound like white folks that go to Hollywood got money already, so that means they do what they want to do. They don't have no money either. They are all broke. They are all struggling artists when they first get out there, man. This dude is delusional, but see, this is what the mindset of Negronomics do to you. The truth of the matter is Jonathan Majors is just that type of dude. He, they're not making him do that. They are pushing him down our throat because he is this kind of dude. They like him because he is the worst type of representation of black American men we could find. He is a bitch boy and they know it and they love him for it. This ain't got nothing to do with money, bro. This is not about money. This is just about the character that dude and they are using him for the way that he already is. They're not making him do nothing. But, I, but you notice how Boyce went straight to money. You see, and this is after I did this video. I'm telling you, this is Negronomics. But I have another one for you. Because also a clip of Kevin Samuels, him, mediocre tutorials and reviews, uh, the lead um, the lead attorney, I don't have a beef with lead attorney, uh, um, Dennis Sperling, 
they all they they I guess they did something before Kevin died, right? But notice that mediocre tutorials and reviews, he talks about money, talk about business. And then when he finished, then the Sperling get up there, and the first thing he talks about is how they took these. Excuse me. I, I just ate, man. I'm burping all over. Anyway, he talked about how they took these um these ideas that they started on YouTube and converted it to a multi-million dollar business. This is all these dudes is about, man. That's why the Manosphere uh, message was watered down. Once these dudes started making money, they no longer cared about telling you the truth. Crimson Cure, all of them, they lying to you. They are, this is Negronomics. They are telling you what you want to hear so they can cash in on it. And it's all about money or some type of power over somebody else. It's Negronomics. That, that is all of that. But I want you to hear what they say. Check this out. You know, it's one thing to hear about the benefits of image, to hear about the benefits of business, right? Understanding what you're doing besides just creating, but understanding the full components, the full business behind it. It's one business, thing business, to business, hear business. About it, and then to actually see it in movement <laughs> and in action. And that's what we're doing here. Right. Business, 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 business. I, uh, I have a couple of businesses, a law firm and also an entertainment company, but I have not seen it, seen it done of this magnitude mm -hmm. where these guys are basically taking an idea that they started on YouTube, build it up to a multi-million dollar business. Whoa! Business, 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 business. Built it up to a multi-million dollar business. Now, Kevin Samuels, I didn't play his part, but he said that he actually started his YouTube channel from the perspective of business. The dude wasn't teaching y'all nothing. He wasn't preaching, he wasn't teaching. He was selling what he understood you wanted to hear, and he cashed in on it. That's what he was doing. That's what he's doing. All y'all call this dude the Godfather, and he played y'all. He he is an image consultant. He played the role in an image to cash in on it monetarily. This is Negronomics. Now, I'm going to get back to the regular schedule program, because like I said, I already did the video. I just had to come back and add this in, man, because I thought this was just... I mean, y'all can't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, bro. This is the realest YouTube channel y'all got, bro. You can't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. I called this madness, man. I called it. This is Negronomics, bro. You know, this is Negronomics. The dude did just what he do. I'm sorry, I got lost my train of thought. I'm trying to get the backdrop up. I'm, I'm going to learn the software, people. I'm, I'm going to get smooth at it. Don't worry. But anyway, it's Negronomics. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that everything for these people is about business, money, because they're going to teach you that business equals money and money equals power. But it don't. It wouldn't matter if Jonathan... I mean, look what they just did Will Smith. Will Smith is worth what? A couple of hundred mil? And they finally made him play a slave? Dude ain't never played that kind of role his entire career. He smacks, uh, 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 what's his name in the mouth, you know what I'm saying, on stage. He has to apologize for that, you know what I'm saying. All his dirt could get aired out by his crazy ass wife. And then he go play a slave. That's what you call breaking their back. Because Hollywood has something he won't. Instead of him being a man and saying, man, I ain't doing nothing. You know, I ain't apologize, because I wouldn't apologize, you know what I'm saying. To me... That smack was justified. Chris took a stab at that lady last time he was on that stage. Four, five years later, he get back on that same stage and take another stab at her. I take that personally. I'd have bat him in his mouth too, you know what I'm saying? You heard me? But anyway, he go apologize and then he go play a slave. This ain't got nothing to do with money. It's character of people. Nothing to do with money, man. But they gonna make you believe that if, if, if Jonathan was rich, he wouldn't have had to do that. Jonathan would do that if he had a billion dollars. Because that dude is just that kind of person. Back to the regular schedule, man. Let's get back to this deal. Because all of these things fall into the purview of social economics. Let me pull up this slide of social economics. Because you need to see this to understand this. All of these fall into the purview of social economics. <clears throat> now, now, look, now, look what this saying. According to a government, the, the, um, the NIH, actually, that's National Health Institution, something like that, National, National Institution of Health, something like that. That's what Fauci used to work, right? According to that organization, 
It says that social economics is a way of describing people based on their education, income, and type of job. Social economic status is usually de described as low, medium, or high. People with a lower social economic status usually have less access to financial, educational, social, and health resources than those with a higher social economic status. Now, I want you to think about that. Because see, I, these definitions are relatively new, but I've been telling people for years, I mean years, what social economics mean. I've been trying to explain to people for a long time that social economics is actually the unstated value that we place upon things within this social construct. Things like the education of a person, things like what type of education did they receive, uh, what type of degree did, degree did they receive, uh, what, which college they went to, what type of college did they go to. All of these things are factored in to the way we judge people or prejudge people. Things like their, their career, things like uh, uh, their religion, or lack thereof, their race, their, their, politi their political positions, or lack thereof. All of these things are factored in to, to, to the, in, in this whole scope of social economics. So what you have is that when blacks come selling Negronomics to us, it's a special form of social economics that has been catered to, I mean, uh, uh, tailored to target black Americans specifically. And one of the main things they promise is power. They, they, they promise that they're going to show you how to get the kind of power that will gain respect in the society. But guess what, my brothers and sisters? I hate to tell you this. There is no amount of money that you can earn that's going to change the way this society treats us as a whole. It's not going to happen. And besides, it's only individuals make that kind of money. The bulk of us would never have that kind of money. But how they trick you... They tell you that we can do more because the black American actually, uh, what they, what they say, black Americans actually have like, like, like $1.6 trillion in spending power or something like that, right? This is what they tell us, right? Now this chick, Alyssa, she writes for this, um, this, this online column, right? She, she's a freelance writer. She wrote that article, right? That said black American spending power is huge. As of 2020, we've reached a record 1.6 trillion in spending. I don't even know what that means. But according to the US Department of Labor, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, it tells a different story. According to this, if you notice, 60% of us make less than $38,000 a year. I, now see, this is something that we always knew to be true. And I don't know why you dudes be sitting online stunting. 60% of us make less than that. You have another 10% of us make uh, 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 more than $60,000, right? Just a little bit more, between 60 and 87,000. I don't know why it's 62 to 87. I mean, why not just 60 to 85? I mean, these weird numbers. Well, they did that because, see, the, the column before that, that 37 to 62, they did that because they didn't want to go to 35 to 60 because then that that it would drop down to like 15 percent or something like that. Well, it would stay the same, but they, but they wanted to put some 60,000s in that category to make it look like it's more than it actually is. But when you come over here to the other side, it's about 12 percent of us that make more than sixty thousand dollars, right? The rest, the other, the, the rest, right? That's that that's what that is. That's that's 40, but what, what I say is um 35 and 20. So that's about 60% make less than, than 38,000. Another 12% makes more than 60,000. That means everybody else is, is, is in that line. And that, that don't even go to the millionaire status. It stops at 500,000. 500, what is this? 580,000? It stops at 580,000. So this is not even saying that about, about the millionaires and the billionaires. But if you look at these numbers, there's no way we spending $1.6 trillion because we don't even make $1.6 trillion. So we are not spending that. So, but these are the kind of things that are pushed through black media onto black people. 
that we have all this wealth, that we have all this power. The only problem is we just not doing right with it. Okay, so what do we do? Well, let me sell you on an idea for Bitcoin. Or, or let me sell you on an idea for um, uh, 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 something else. You know what I'm saying? Let, let me sell you on an idea for, 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 for uh, multi-level marketing. Because we making the money. We got money. We can invest something. Let me sell you an idea of real estate. Do you know how many friends of mine got into real estate right before the, um, the first crash, right, in 2001, right, 2002? I mean, they was jumping into this stuff, buying fourplexes and little mini, you know, hotels and all kinds of stuff, bro. And they was like, Kush, man, why you ain't getting involved in that? I said, man, this is not right. Something's not right about this, man. Property just don't constantly increase like this. Now, of course, it's still increased. What they do periodically is they let people get in, invest all their money in it, crash the market, wipe them out, and then still let it increase some more. You know what I'm saying? That's all they've been doing. It's been constantly increasing, but you can't ride the wave. Nobody can, su can, can survive the dip. Once it dip, you lose. And, and all my friends lost big when everything dipped. None of them have properties now. All of them had five, six properties and all this stuff. I mean, they, they was balling on paper, bro. You know what I'm saying? None of them had them properties no more. None of them. They took big losses trying to dump them, trying to sell them and stuff like this here. So, but I told them that this wasn't right. I told them that, he, that, 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 that money don't work like this here. That this is not how this goes. But they didn't listen to me because they had all these black gurus around here telling them about real estate. Namely, from the Nation of Islam. Real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate is all he was talking, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but it's, it's, it, it goes beyond just stuff like that. Take, 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 I played that clip of Dr. Umar Johnson talking about how black money and white money don't work the same. First of all, how would he know? He's not around rich white people. He don't know. He's not really around rich black people, to be honest. So he don't really know how white money or black money works. You know what I'm saying? He's pulling this out of his butt because he knows that that selling the idea of power through money seems to be attractive to black people. And, and through this idea that we're going to change your whole reality in America if you just make a little bit more money. We're going to change your reality. White folks are going to deal with you differently. If we as a collective make more money, white folks will deal with all of us differently. But they're claiming we, we, we have 1.6 trillion in spending power. Should, should, should we not be treated differently already? But are we not still getting shot down like dogs by, by the police officers? I mean, are, are we treated better? No. You know why? Because one of the parts of Negronomics is also the infighting against each other. Feminism and the whole thing about the gynecocracy, these are extensions of white supremacy. Unfortunately for you brothers, so is red pill slash man, uh, uh, MGTOW. These are extensions of white supremacy. So as long as we sitting here arguing about what women are not doing and how they should be, judging them based off of the white man's so-called traditions, because that's what we do. We Every time we talk about traditional marriage and traditional this, we're talking about the white man's way. We're not talking about our way. We're talking about the white man's way. So as long as we sit here and we argue uh, 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 about these things, all we do, all we do is justify why we can't get along and why we have this, 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 this rift between us in every aspect because that's just the men and women. And then you got the class thing. You got the high value man versus the pook and the ray ray. You, you, I mean, think about it. We, we have every way you could think of to divide ourselves because these, th these are the tenets of Negronomics. Negronomics causes us to judge each other based on everything. And we never judge each other favorably. There's always going to be something wrong. Say a man got money, but he's a little more, you know, chill in the way he deals with his wife. He's a cuck. A word y'all like throwing out that y'all don't even have an idea what it means. Y'all like calling somebody a beta cuck man and all this crazy stuff. Y'all y'all don't have an idea what that word means. You know what I'm saying? You're using it way, way out of, out of its intended use. 
you you are you are using that word improperly but I, that's that's a story for another day but if a man is a little more lax in how he deals with his woman he he's weak say if a man is broke though but he's strict on his woman then he's insecure i mean there's really no way to go the woman say a woman makes the money you know what i'm saying and she takes care of her husband right because he just can't find a job or whatnot then the husband is weak and the woman is, 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 is some type of gyno crack that's just ruling over the man. I mean, it's all kinds of craziness. We seem to not have an understanding that we are just human beings living a human experience within this wicked system. Instead, we judge each other based off of everything that we see. It doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter what you believe, your religion is going to be judged harshly by a black person. And we wasn't like this at one time. Look, I'm old enough to remember, man, when we just didn't care about what another person did. Black or, or otherwise, we didn't care. We were only interested in living our own lives. We didn't have all these opinions on other people's lives and how they live and what they did. Today, we, 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 we are circling a drain as a people and all we can do is, is worry about what some Instagram thought is doing, or what, some, what some entertainer is doing, what some rapper said, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we are in a state of pure madness right now. And we are here all because of Negronomics. Now I know right now I'm rambling because I'm trying to lay the foundation because I'm gonna use Negronomics to talk about a lot of different things. I wanted to kind of talk, that's why I say Negronomics 101. I wanted to kind of get this out the way, the foundation of it. So that I start talking about Negronomics in relation to relationships, you understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how we view certain aspects of relationships based upon these value systems that we have in our head. You know what I'm saying? We think that is that 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 certain things are right automatically and certain things are wrong automatically. We have no consideration or understanding for the individuals involved. It just need to be our way and our way only or it's wrong. And unfortunately for all y'all, that's not how real life is you know what i'm saying you're the one that's missing out on life but negro nomics is is, is is the reason why we are losing because all we want is money because we think money equals power and we want power because we want the respect of white folks that's what it's all about i should have opened with that it took 20 minutes for me to get there i'm going to make sure i make a note of that in the, in the thing <laughs> you know what i'm saying make a note of that statement because that's what it is so everybody come through and they sell us on the idea of money for everything, even a relationship. Think about the high value man argument, right? They, 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 they'll sit there and they'll make fun. This is a good example. Watch, watch this here. Brother Brian, you're going to like this one, bro. They sit there and they make a mockery of the kinds of women that get online and say the dumb stuff about how they want a man making six six figures. You know, he need to make a he need to be making a hundred thousand or more and all this, this stuff. When the truth is, what that's less than two percent of us, you know, three percent, five percent at most. I mean, these women are delusional, but these dudes will sit there and they'll point out how delusional these women are and then turn right around and accuse the woman that has a dude that's broke for wanting a pookie for wanting a no good dude that don't have nothing and then they'll turn around and they'll they'll structure every argument around the high value man and the man of means men of means won't put up with that men of means don't deal with that men of means don't want the woman that do that but then when the woman say, well, I want a man of means, then a man got to be a man of means to deal with me. Oh, she's delusional. Who she think make that kind of money? She don't understand who, you know, people don't make that kind of money. But make y'all mind up, bro. Y'all all over the board with this stuff, man, because of Negronomics. That's the problem with y'all. Y'all have been sold a value system, a social economic value system. And the foundation of it is money. Money ain't, ain't, ain't the only thing in it, but the foundation is money. For the black American man and woman, y'all truly believe that money will solve all of your problems. But you don't understand the world that you live in. You will be black rich, just like you are black poor. Didn't Jay-Z tell y'all that? Rich nigga, poor nigga. Didn't Jay-Z try to tell y'all that? 
Come on, the man dropped the whole song, but y'all don't like him because he's a pookie. He dropped the whole song telling you that you are still a nigga. He put the song out there for you so that you can hear it. You are still. It don't matter what you got in these folks' eyes. You are still. But y'all are under the delusion that all you need to do is make money and them white folks are going to deal with you differently. Well, ask Henry Lewis Gate, Dr. Henry Lewis Gate, try to get in his own house. He lives in a white neighborhood, million dollar homes. He, he forgets his key or whatnot. He's trying to get in his house. Somebody calls the police on the police beat, you no, know, not beat him up, but they had, they roughed him up, threw him in the car and took him away for trying to get in his own house. Now you tell me them white folks didn't know he lived in that house. The dude is on CNN and all this stuff, MSNBC. Tell me them white folks didn't know that he was in that house. Well, there's a chance they didn't know he was in that house because most of them probably don't even watch liberal news. He, he more than likely moved around a whole bunch of rich conservatives because that's the kind of thing you Negroes do when y'all get money because y'all still view the conservative as the top. This is why the whole Red Pill community is slightly conservative because deep down, y'all view conservatism as superiority because that's where the dominant, aggressive white male is and you, 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 you moist, tofu-ass dudes that, that when your booties get wet for these white men, y'all act like little, little, little boy, I don't want to say it. You know, boy, I don't want to say it. But y'all know what y'all act like, but y'all act like y'all getting moist down there behind these white men. Y'all want to be whatever y'all see the dominant white male as being. That, might, that white man is not even dominant for real. He looks dominant because the system that supports him. He's not dominant on his own. He's not dominant in reality. He ain't dominant in the pen. He ain't dominant on the streets. He ain't dominant in a dark alley, one-on-one -on -one with a brother. Damn, it could be three-on-one -on -one with a brother. They about to get beat. They about to get taxed in that dark alley. They gonna come out running. The brother gonna be chasing all three of them, trying to figure out which one he gonna catch. You know what I'm saying? They ain't dominant. They dominant because the system upholds them and pushes us down, so they seem dominant. So they could talk reckless, they could talk aggressive, but they ain't about nothing. But these are the white boys y'all want to be like. That's why all y'all jumped on the red pill rhetoric. We've been dealing with the problems of feminism in our neighborhood, man, since the 60s and 70s. This ain't new for us. Y'all act like this a 2010 thing. Man, we've been dealing with that. That's why brothers like me is married to a German. That, that's why I got, I got a friend married to, to an Asian girl. I got another friend married to a Mexican. My son, his, his girl is Mexican. My, his cousin girl is Mexican. This is why we in these situations because we've been dealing with this scourge of feminism in our hood, but we never called it MGTOW. We never, we never considered what we, we never considered that we needed a manosphere. All of this is the white man's way of doing things because he know if he creates an institution, even if it exists only in your mind online, he can control that institution. And then you get your Negronomic peddlers to come in and they make money off of you by pushing the narrative that you want to hear. They say all the things that you want them to say. You get mad at brothers like me who tell you the truth, but you listen to them while they tell you nothing but lies. You tripping, man. You tripping. I tell you the truth. I give you real stuff. You hate me. They tell you lies. They, they, they mislead you. You love them. We got to do better than this, man. We have to do better. Negronomics is a problem. Money is not power. Not for you. Money is their source of power. No amount of money you get is going to change their source. That is their weapon. That is their tool. And not to mention, a lot of y'all don't know economics, social economics, or economics itself. Economics was really just a hobby for rich people. It was, it was a theoretical thing they dealt with as to how they utilized their wealth. It was something that, was, that the wealthy would sit around and talk about. That's where, the, that's where economics come from. 
it was never about nothing else. Economics is a wealthy game. You are not wealthy. Making a million dollars don't make you wealthy. Making $10 million don't make you wealthy. Making $100 million don't make you wealthy. You will never make enough money to change the structure of this system from within. And we don't have enough money collectively. So you can stop buying books from these dudes. You can stop supporting these dudes channel because they are selling you bull. Our only weapon is compliance. If we stop complying with this system, we could break the system. That is our only weapon. But the truth is, and I've been saying this over and over again, y'all don't want to pull out from the system. Y'all won't end. Y'all want a seat at that table. Y'all don't want to be away from it. Y'all want to be respected by it. Y'all want to be representatives of this wickedness. The same wickedness that y'all should be trying to go against. Y'all won't end. Come on, man. Come on, man. <clears throat> I actually turned the music off and, and not the mic. Ain't, ain't that crazy? And I did that earlier. I meant to take that out. You know? But um, I'm done with this one here, man. You know what? You know what I'm going to do, though? Since I kind of freestyle this thing, I'm not going to upload it as is. I'm going to put it through the editor. And I'm going to cut out certain things so the music won't line up everywhere. But I'm going to cut out certain parts. And I'm going to line this thing up right so, so it'll be a nice video. Because I made some good points. But I don't want to lose nobody through the through how slow I build. Because I, I got to build to the conversation, you know what I'm saying? Because these things are, you know, I'm trying to take, I'm trying to lead you somewhere, you know what I'm saying? So I got to build up to it. But, um... Yeah, Negronomics is something that's real, man. And we're going to talk about this, you know, through and through. And I'm going to show you how it all connects. Because I need y'all to get away from the notion that money is your... It, it, money is the thing that you need to make changes. Because money is not going to change anything. Money is not going to stop these people's system from existing. Money is not going to break these people's system. I hate to tell you that. Uh, excuse me. Guess that means I need to go eat. On that note, bro, you know what I'm saying? I, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to call it a day. I'll be back with more. Um, look, man, y'all got to help me out, bro. I, I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to do right by us, man. You know what I'm saying? But y'all got to help me out, man. This, this, what, what I'm going through is not easy because I'm being drowned out by dumb stuff. These people don't know what I know. They haven't seen what I've seen. They haven't done what I've done. But I, I find myself having to argue with these people all the time. So, but this is what I want, right? I want you to like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already done so, and hit that bell icon. If you want to throw a dollar or two at me, right? I mean, five bucks, you know what I'm saying? Anything to help. You know, that's Venmo at the Black Alpha. Cash App at the Black Alpha. My PayPal is realblackalpha at gmail.com. Now, the Patreon, I'm about to upload videos to Patreon. Patreon is going to be raw dog stuff. Stuff that I really don't want to talk about on YouTube because all they're going to do is flag my video. And I like to think uh, that young lady that was antagonizing me with the Tina, with, 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 with the Tina Turner um, picture on her profile pic. I can't even think of her name right now. I like to thank her because... You are, you have given me the content that I want to put on Patreon. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk so bad about you and your kind. You females like you make me sick. Y'all are a scourge to humanity. We would be it would be wise for us. Nope. See, I, I can't say it. I, I wasn't gonna say nothing violent. YouTube. I wasn't gonna say nothing violent. But it, what I was gonna say was still y'all was gonna get mad at me for it. So I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna say that for Patreon. But I'm gonna go in harder on people on Patreon. It, it will be, uh, it was gonna be, it's gonna be raw. It's gonna be cursing. All that stuff is gonna be in there, right? So my Patreon is about to get uploaded, and you're gonna love the content on Patreon. But the Venmo at the Black Alpha, Cash App at the Black Alpha, PayPal at RealBlackAlpha at gmail.com. Show your love, bro. You know what I'm saying? Help me out. Help, help me do this thing, man. Because um. I'm, I, look, I'm not a speaker, bro. This is not what I do. I'm an action man. I'm a dude that get out there and do things. So.
So I'm trying to put together things that we can actually do. But before I can start doing things with y'all, I got to get enough of y'all on the same page here. And I know y'all want me to go back and talk about relationships some more, man, because I've I seen a lot of brothers was really feeling what I was saying about how to deal with women. I could do that, man. But the truth of the matter is, bro, I don't really care about what they doing like that, man. You know what I'm saying? I, look, I don't care about no woman having her demands on what she want a man to have. I don't, I don't care. I don't care about how crazy they are. I don't care. I don't care how messed up they are. Because the truth of the matter is, bro, any woman that come into my orbit, she's going to move a certain way or she got to get out. It's just that simple. And if I could teach you dudes to just have that mentality, you could stop caring about these crazy women too, man. I don't care about this stuff, bro. But the women ain't all by themselves messed up, man. You know what I'm saying? We got we to gotta understand that we are messed up too. And if you listen well, I just said, I just pointed out a whole lot of stuff that got us messed up right here in this, in this Negronomics opener. You know what I'm saying? We not right either, bro. You know, but we, we don't know how messed up we are because we lying to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We lying to ourselves, but we messed up too, man. So anyway, on that note, I'm done. I'm going to call this a day, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm about to put this through the editor so I can have this thing nice so y'all can listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I build up to everything. But y'all got to help me, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to help me. If y'all, look, we need me. Y'all don't understand. I'm here because I'm trying to fulfill a need. I'm not here to try to get rich off, y'all. I'm not, I'm not here for Negronomics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not here for Negro Namas. I just don't want to turn my passion into an, ex an expense. I don't want to turn my mission into a financial burden on me and my family, right? Help me cover that. So when I come out and talk to the brothers, I have something for sisters too. That's what you sisters don't understand. Y'all think that I'm all about the men. Bruh, I don't hate y'all women. I get tired of telling you sisters I am not against y'all. I do not hate women. You know what I'm saying? I don't hate black women, you know? I want to see y'all do better. I want to see y'all change. But y'all got to help me help y'all. I want to do live seminars. You got to help me. I got to come out and talk to you so I can talk in a way that YouTube won't flag the videos. But you have to help me. On that note, I'm out of here. I'm Brother Kush, a.k.a. The Black Alpha. Salam. <laughs>